Hey guys, Jason's here. Today, we're gonna introduce you a feature named Hot Standby. As we're concerned, a reliable system should be designed with a failover mechanism to protect itself against unaccepted failures. Hot Standby feature on S-Series PBX is right used as the mechanism to provide reliability in system configurations. Two systems are active at the same time, one as the primary server and the other as the secondary server. Meanwhile, all data of the primary server will be synchronized on the secondary server automatically, and the secondary system will detect the real-time status of the primary system. Once abnormal status has been detected, the secondary server will take over immediately, reducing the business loss caused by the server failure. Okay, time for us to jump in. Let's check it out. At the very beginning, don't forget to enable hot standby on S-Series PBX. The following requirements are supposed to be satisfied. Both PBX should belong to the same model. The firmware of the two PBXs needs to be the same version. In other words, two PBXs should be exactly the same in terms of hardware installation and firmware version. And of course, both devices are supposed to be deployed in the same LAN, since this feature won't work via the internet or VPN. Here's an example. Let's check it out. Two S300 with the same hardware installation have been deployed in the same LAN. First thing first, let's move on to confirm the firmware version. Click on Resource Monitor icon on the top right corner to check PBX information. Make sure the two servers' software version are the same. Then we can carry on to the network setting page. Edit the PBX host name to distinguish the two PBXs. Say we set this one as IPPBX1, the other one as IPPBX2. Now, we can start setting up house standby on both PBX after the preparation steps. Say we set IPPBX1 as a primary server and IPPBX2 as a secondary server. Here, on IPPBX1, enable house standby and set the mode to primary. Then, fill in the information on IPPBX2. The access code is used to authenticate the connection. We can customize it and remember to enter the same code on the other PBX. Next, set a virtual IP address. You may be wondering about the function of the virtual IP address. Let me explain a little. As we know, both PBXs are configured with the private IP. Usually, when we register local IP phones to a PBX, we need to use PBX private IP as the server address. But to make hot standby work, we need to make all phones communicate with the server address shared by both PBX. So, no matter which PBX takes over, all IP phones will be able to make and receive calls normally. Actually, virtual IP address is a shared IP for two PBXs. Say, we set this virtual IP for them. By default, the network connection detection is the gateway address. We recommend you to keep the default setting. PBX will ping the gateway address to see if the IP is accessible. This setting helps the secondary server to judge whether the primary server works normally. When the secondary server receives no response from the primary server, but it can still access the gateway address, in this case, it will consider the primary server has broken down and finally take its place. What's more, here we get advanced settings. It will only work when the server runs as a standby system. Keep Alive, it defines the frequency to send heartbeat Keep Alive packets. By default, it's 2 seconds. That means the standby server will send heartbeat Keep Alive packets to the primary server every 2 seconds. Dead time. It defines the maximum time interval before the primary server responds to the standby server. If after time's out, the secondary server receives no response, it will take over automatically. If you want to customize that time, 
Remember to set a value longer than the rebooting time. Otherwise, the standby server will take over when the primary server is rebooting normally. We simply keep the default settings. Disk synchronization. It will sync all data from the external plugin disk to make settings take effect. Don't forget to click on Save and reboot the system. Now, let's turn to the secondary PBX. Same as what we did, enable Hot Standby, enter the information of the primary server, and the same access code. Enter the same virtual IP address, save all the configurations and reboot the PBX to make settings take effect. Once Hot Standby starts working, the login account of the secondary PBX will be the same as that of the primary PBX. Now, let's test it if the feature works. Just create an extension in the primary server. In the Hot Standby PBX, the extension will be created automatically. It actually indicates Hot Standby is working now. Alright guys, that was how we made the failover mechanism working on our S-Series PBX. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. So, why don't you guys just have a test? Tell us if you have any questions. Leave us your comment down below here. And, of course, don't forget to subscribe. I will see you guys in the next one.